Uh, hello again, seventh grade. I'd just like to go over some of the key points from the whale evolution kind of timeline that we did in the last couple days here. Uh, I want to show you the answers, also point out kind of some of the most important parts and kind of how to summarize this information. And then at the end, I'm going to briefly go over kind of what we're expecting from uh, today's assignment, which is called what whale evolution evidence. And then this is what you'll be working on today. Uh, but we'll get to that at the end. Otherwise, take a look at some of this stuff. You know, the years were on there. Double check on that one. That seems like kind of a big gap there. But really, in general, it doesn't matter too much when uh, they found them. That's really not what we're focusing on. This is just when the fossil was discovered, kind of the history of the paleontology. Same thing here. It kind of gives you an idea of where these animals might have been found in the past. A lot of the early whale ancestors appear to be in the Middle East slash Northern Africa, if you think about Egypt. And the kind of age here, what we really need to kind of get from this age is the further on the left, like the Mesonicids, are the oldest ones. And then the most recent, even though it's 36 million years ago, are the Dora, Dorudon or Prosioglodon. Can't really say those. <laughs> um, and then for the habitat, what we were really just looking at here is where did they live? So we started off with the Mesonicids and the Pachycetus were land only. So they, I would guess, had four legs. Those were some of the ones that said they like had little hooves and they didn't have a nostril. Like if you're looking at the front of an animal, the nostril that lives on land at least is usually in the front of the skull. But if you think of a dolphin or a whale or any of these um, mammals that live in the ocean, that nostril kind of migrates to the top of their head. So they don't have to stick their nose out of the water. They can just bring their head to the surface and breathe. So we noticed the oldest ones are land only. Then we start kind of going into the sea. Can go on this land and water, like a sea lion or an alligator or anything like that. We have seawater for the Rhodocetus. And then we kind of get into the ones that are the first completely aquatic, was the Bisalosaurus. And the most recent one is water only as well. Uh, they had pretty sure these two had lost all of their hind leg bones and that kind of, well, not the bones, but they didn't have legs dangling off of them anymore. All right. So this is really, these things here are really the things that we want to focus on for the assignment for today, um, where you're kind of summarizing the evidence or the things that you can point at, see on these skeletons that help you know that the ancestors of a whale used to be a four-legged creature that walked around on the land and did all sorts of land things. Hey, so we kind of want to point out some of the things that help us know that whales haven't always lived in the sea, at least their ancestors, I should say. So if we start at the earliest part here, we had four legs, we had hooves, we had um, tails, we had all the features of a critter that walks on land. We also had nostrils at the end of the nose, like I talked about, like a dog has the nostrils on the end of the nose. Um, we had early whale teeth. They were getting sharper in the pachycetus. Nostrils are a little bit further back on the nose, but not completely on the top yet. All right. So those are some of the early ancestors. If we move to some of the ones that could go in water, so the Ambulocetus and the Rhodocetus, we have nostrils even further back, the skull is getting longer, so it's a little bit more aerodynamic or um, seaworthy, so water doesn't slow down the critter. The ears are further back, smaller eyes, able to swallow under the water, 
Okay, and ears, the ear structure was designed similarly to um, critters that can hear underwater well. Now we have front flippers on the Ambulocetus. Stout femur, so it can walk and it can swim. Now the stout femur just means it's strong or big or well-developed. Small, the legs are starting to get smaller in the back though. Um, and then the way that the vertebrae are put together, the paleontologists can look at it and they can know that the vertebrae works best in an, uh, what do they call that? Up and down motion. I think there's a fancier word in the presentation here. We can look at that when I get to the presentation, I suppose. Um, but that's a characteristic of whales and dolphins is going up and down. Um, fish, fish, sharks. Um, yeah, those are the main two that come to mind. Do not swim with their tails going up and down. They swim with their tails going side to side. So that is a big key difference between the way that land, or not land, sea mammals like whales and dolphins swim compared to fish like sharks and pound fish or whatever kind of fish you're looking at. Hey. Uh, 11 to 12 feet long. Okay, we talked about that. Well-developed hip bones and large pelvis, but they didn't have any leg bones. Strong's tail for swimming. Femur starting to get even shorter on the uh, rhodocetus. And then some of the most recent ancestors that we found of the whales, the Bacillosaurus and the Dorodon, have whale teeth still, so early whale teeth. Uh, they have a whale ear bone, so something that matches very similar to modern day whales. And then nostrils even further back. And on the most recent one, the Doroduon, or Dorodon, we have the nostril in the middle of the skull on the top. So it's a blowhole essentially. Okay. Front flippers, no back legs. Even modern whales still have front flippers to help them uh, kind of turn and do all sorts of stuff in the water. They have no back legs sticking out anymore, but they have these remnants or vestigial structures, small hind limb bones. So if you look at the skeleton of even a modern day whale, they have these remnants, these vestigial structures that they used to have and they used to use because they were four-legged creatures once upon a time that walked around on land. But now the leg dangling around in the water kind of slows you down because it creates a lot of drag, a lot of resistance. So it's really not beneficial to have um, a leg dangling in the water anymore. You're not going to use it to walk on the land. So natural selection says if a trait isn't beneficial because it makes you slower in the water and maybe you can't catch food as quickly or as well or other things can catch you because you're slower, then those traits are going to become less and less common. So that's why the whale legs have disappeared over time. Um, it's not beneficial, and it hurts their survival if they've got legs when they fully live and swim in the water. Um, they have long tails. This is the first one to have a fluke, which is the end of the tail, you know, the part that kind of goes out on a whale so it actually can swim. Um, we have smaller forelimbs, front flippers, very small back flipper. And no ability to walk on the land in these last two. So, once again, when you get to some of the stuff on today's assignment and on the quiz that's going to happen for you on Monday, you want to kind of convince Mrs. Froman and myself that the ancestors of whales used to live on the land. And you want to pick some of the things in here that. We can see on old fossils or even modern day whales that help us know a long time ago their ancestors used to be walking around on land. So if I just kind of go over some of this uh, the highlights with some of the pictures in here quick before we kind of briefly go to um, okay. okay. Computer's being slow. Come on. Anyway, 
we have the picture. I don't know if I'm assuming you can see it here. So we've got our four-legged creature. I think this was the oldest ancestor that we found. Uh, kind of looks dog-like, sort of. Um, and then we get to some of the more recent ones, and we see that there's these little hip bones and leg bones that are inside the body. They don't actually stick out anymore. Um, that's the vestigial structure for sure. And where were some of the ones? Early whale teeth, you notice they're pretty uniform in size. Uh, they're all very similar to each other. Whales don't have a lot of different shaped teeth like we do, where we have um, incisors, which bite through things and break like plant parts in half. We've got our canines, which carry the meat, and we've got our molars, which crush and grind things. Um, whale teeth are very, I think the fancy term for it is unidont, meaning one kind of tooth. Una means one, and dot means teeth. But if we go ahead to some of these slides that had a comparison here. Right. Losing their legs. Here we have one of the first ancestors, fully legged. Um, kind of looks like it kind of has a crocodile-shaped body because it's kind of a land and a um, sea creature at the same time, so they kind of have a similar body build when that happens. Here we have our vestigial structure of femur and our tibia and fibula and our tarsals and our phalanges, our toes. And then in a modern day sperm whale, we just kind of have this um, hip bone, the pelvis that's there, and we've lost most of the other bones, but we still have that vestigial structure. And here's some ones from the early ancestors where it looks like a dog, essentially. It's got its nostrils right in the front. And then they start to slowly move back further to the top of the skull here, where we have a modern-day gray whale. It's all the way back on the top of the head there. Um, hearing aids, so how they could hear. They had little ear structures here, so they had a ear canal similar to us. But then um, over time, some of those ear canals were kind of lost, and they just transmit the sound via some of their other bone structures. And then a modern-day whale has this big giant structure on the top of its head that helps uh, kind of echo some of those vibrations down to its inner ear. All right, and then they kind of go into what are some of the closest modern relatives of whales. So. We have odd-toed ungulate, ungulate, so I think rhinos have three toes, if I remember correctly. Zebras and horses only have one kind of fused bone that forms one toe, or a hoof. And then we have even-toed ungulates. Most of these, if I remember correctly, just have two. No, no, not the hippo. Must have like four then or something if it's even-toed. But deer, you know, if you ever see a deer track, it's just got those two prints in the ground there. And the reason why they kind of peg these as being similar is some of the similar similarities in the bone structure. And they also noticed that they, some of the early ancestors had hooves. Uh, once they kind of compare those different traits that are similar, and remember those are homologous structures or homologous traits. That just means a similar anatomy, like one bone here, then two bones, then a bunch of bones, and then your phalanges. But they're kind of changed into different ways and different functions. So they're similar based on their structures or the bones in them, but they've evolved into different functions. Like a whale uses their flippers, their arms, to swim, where we use them to grab onto things. Right. Um, but once we kind of got this DNA evidence, we tested it to double check that we were making the correct decision based on DNA, not just, hey, this bone looks similar to this bone, which is good, but sometimes that can be tricky to figure out what is closely related to other things. So they did that DNA analysis and they just compared different genes to see how close they were, and they actually found out that 
um, the hippo is the closest living relative of a whale. So hippos obviously have four legs. They have hooves on them. Um, a long time ago, those ancestors we talked about, like the Pachycetus and things like that, split apart in one group specialized at kind of being partly aquatic, partly land, like a hippo. And the other group slowly became fully marine mammals. So with that, just remember that here we have the whale evolution evidence, and it specifically asks for three pieces of evidence that uh, you can use to support whether best support the claim that whales evolved from land mammals. So the things, the evidence is just saying um, this creature had this feature, or it had this about its skull. Um, it did have feet, or it didn't have feet. And then the reasoning is just saying um, what that means. So if the nostrils are on the front of the skull, that would be the evidence. The reasoning is, well, what the heck does that mean? Does that mean that they can breathe fire out of their nose? Does that mean that they can breathe underwater? What does it really mean? What does it tell us? How does it let us know that a whale came from ancestors that lived on land? That's really what you're trying to do here. Convince us that this evidence, the thing that you notice about the skull, about the legs, about anything, tells us that a whale came from a land mammal. That's what you're trying to do with the reasoning. And this worksheet, you can essentially use on the quiz that's coming up next Monday. Uh, it's going to be very similar. We're going to ask you for evidence. We're going to ask you to explain things. So if you do a good job here, you're going to have a pretty easy time on Monday with the quiz. I'm pretty sure on Monday on the quiz, you're going to have like some word limits, like you have to have 100 words or whatever. So you kind of want to make sure that your reasoning isn't just because it does, or IDK, or it means that they live on land. You've got to give us some detail. If you don't tell us anything, there's really not much for us to look at and give you a grade based on how much you know about this and how well you can make an argument. Okay, with that, uh, have a great weekend. I hope you enjoyed the Earth Day video yesterday. I hope you get a chance to get outside and see some uh, wild creatures, whether they're birds, plants, anything like that. And otherwise, have a good day.